was just talking to some best friends about this, just the reality that we're all faced with death today, but we don't, we don't live like that. It's crazy. And through this journey, I've been struck by how much we all talk in terms of years from now, or this is what I'm going to do in a decade, or this is what's going to happen in 20 years. And it's weighty. It's, it's almost grievous in how those comments strike me to think that is not promised to any of us. And we bank so much on what we're going to do in our plans, but today is such a precious gift and it's so fragile and fleeting that I, I do, I, I wish there was a way to live in this reality before we face the death sentence. The reality that my body is on a trajectory of dying changes everything. It's a gift, it's a painful and grievous gift, but it's a gift because it's even worship songs as I'm singing worship songs, every word is, is weighty. It's like, I don't sing through a song now without thinking of every word. And I think when you don't have this perspective, it's just easy to like go through the rope, you know, singing and saying, but um, so there's a gift to this that's weighty that I wish we could all experience, wish, wish I could have experienced before, before this diagnosis even, so. Because the doctor said, here's how long to expect. Yes, and what we've decided to do is not share the timeline. We think that could, that's a hard thing. So we've decided to not share specifics, but yeah. The timeline was a pretty striking moment to sit there and listen to a doctor say, this is what, you know, statistics say that you have left. But again, God, God's, yeah, he's got, he's got my days already numbered. And so it's not like the doctor holds something over me, but um, we've just decided we want to live fully every day that I'm alive and take that kind of perspective and not share a timeline that might alter the way people look at me or function um, in the future with me. When I say the word suffering, I, I want to say that carefully because people the world over are suffering far greater than I ha ever have. Um, but in this first world existence that I've grown up in, I would say the suffering has been um, fashioned by God to take away the Colleen stuff that doesn't need to be there so that then I can live out of the heart that he has given me, that I can truly be the Colleen he wants. He's been growing me more and more to be. It's like C.S. Lewis says, you know, it's like a child being content to play in a slum, in a mud pile in a slum, instead of a vacation, a dream vacation. And I think in the early years, I was content with the mud slum of my dreams instead of understanding God's dreams are so much greater and so much more beautiful and, and they last into eternity. Um, so the crushing has had to happen so that I could live into his eternal realities and dreams for me.